Hello, my name is Connor Quinlan, and in this review I'm basically going to be showing all the different controls on the Nikon D5100. Basically it's a how to use the D5100 camera review. And uh, unlike the reviews that I've done before, this one I'm just going to go through each button and what all the functions that it can do, those buttons can do. And uh, basically I'll also show where things have been placed differently compared to the D5000 and whatnot. So, I'm going to start on this side of the camera first. First, we got a couple buttons here. We got a flash button, which you can press that, the flash pops up, and then you can use your flash. You've got the timer button here, and what this will allow you to do is when you press it, you can set a timer mode. So, push it down there. You can see that this part here changed to 10 seconds. And now when I do it and press the button, it will be timed. And then other than that, it also has a secondary function. As you can see, you can control the amount of flash that the camera is going to give off for the flash here. So when you press that, it opens up. If you hold it down, you can adjust uh, how bright the flash is. And then this is also a function button, which means you can assign it a very um, large amount of different things to do, like autofocus or uh, meter differently, whatever it is you may want to do. And then here we have your menu button, and what we're going to do now is basically go over all the things in the menu here. So starting with the playback menu, just got your uh, pretty standard stuff in here. Mostly what I would do in here is just delete pictures. Um, you can have folders, options, um, nothing really important to talk about here. So I'm going to move on. Your shooting menu is probably one of the most important things and the thing you'll change most in your menu and starting at the top you got your reset and an image quality here you can choose what type you're going to shoot raw or jpeg or both got your image size white balance and then you can choose all the different white balances here whether and of course that all changes depending on if it's sunny or if you're taking pictures indoors or if it's shady and then your picture controls especially for those who shoot jpeg are very important here I have it set to vivid, which I always usually do for landscape and nature photography. You can change it up there. Picture controls won't work though with RAW. And then you got auto distortion control, which is very good. Um, if you, especially if you have a lens that distorts a lot, you want to, might want to turn that on if you're taking a picture of a flat horizon where distortion would be obvious. Color space is important. Always set it to Arab, RB, or, um, Adobe RGB. Um, has a lot more colors than sRGB. Active delighting, of course, is very useful, and um, you can definitely turn that on to get rid of uh, very dark shadows or bright highlights. The HDR function is in the shooting menu. It is a very good performer. It actually works really well. Basically takes two shots at different exposures and combines them to make one. You got your long exposure NR, which you use if you want to get rid of noise for longer exposures. High ISO NR which is basically when you're using higher ISOs it helps reduce the noise a bit and then you got your ISO sensitivities setting you can set it to auto and it'll choose it for you and you can choose it manually as well and then you got your release mode which is important you can either do continuous shooting which is on right now good for wildlife and sports single frame self timer quiet shutter all the things are in there and then for multiple exposure, basically what this does is this will just take as many shots as you set it to. Which, other than that, the last thing you have is your movie settings. You can change the type and the speed. And then also you can attach a microphone and change the sensitivity of the microphone as well. On to the next menu is the custom settings menu. Here you can adjust your autofocus, which um, you got. You can choose which uh, how your autofocus's priority will be. You can either choose it to be release or focus priority. Most of the time I would set it to release priority because uh, that way the if you want to take the picture it will bypass the focusing and still take the picture. And then built-in AF assisted illuminator is this guy right here that lights up an area if it's dark out to autofocus. I would just have that set to off. It can really slow down your uh, autofocus when it's light out. And then you've got your EV step here. 
fairly easy to control. Um, you can choose between a third and half a step and what that is is it basically is what you use during aperture priority mode. You use that to adjust your exposure and you can adjust it by third steps or by half steps. Most of the time I just use third steps. And then you can choose what your ALE button is right up here in this menu here and then you can say shutter re release button for the AEL button so if you put that on then you just got your auto. The rest of these are just timer modes which aren't really necessarily important. This is the beep when it's in focus. That's that beep you're hearing. Then you got your ISO display which you can turn on and that will show you your ISO. And then the rest of these you got your flash, auto bracketing set, and then finally the last one right here, the F set you've got all your different function settings and this is how you can set the FN button which is right over here you can set it to do all sorts of different things as you can see and then you can also assign this button as well to a certain function it's mostly for AF though so it's not as um, versatile as the function button but it's still got a lot of things it can do for autofocus and then as for the rest of these um, I don't really think they're all that important to talk about and then you've got your setup menu. This is your pretty much the basic settings of your camera. You don't really ever have to go in here to adjust uh, for taking pictures. It's mostly for the monitor and the memory card format and cleaning the sensor as you can see. Uh, you can choose the types of video mode, HDMI, uh, this is where you would set up your GPS if you had it. And then here you can also adjust your monitor brightness. So you can adjust it whether if it's really bright out, you can go to plus three. If it's darker out, minus three. Um, really the best uh, situation for monitor brightness to adjust that is when it's extremely bright out and put it to plus three. And then that's pretty much all that that does there. And then you got your retouch menu, which to me, honestly, I would just probably never use because you can do a lot of these things with simple editing software. and the stuff in editing software but software is a lot better and then here this will show you all the recent things that you've changed